WT slaying. hesitant to do this <laughs> simply because um, my awakening is a little different than the other awakenings I've seen I'm at work right now I'm on my lunch break so I'm gonna try to make this quick um, it's just been tugging at my heart to share my awakening because it is a little different and uh I don't tell many people about the things I experience with the father, um, unless he tells me to. And there's a lot of things he does tell me to tell, and there's a lot of things he tells me not to, just to remain watchful and and, and prepare for things. So uh, I'm gonna do this now, because I wasn't. <laughs> I kept going back and forth. I'm like, I'm not going to share. I'm not going to share. I'm not going to share. And I've been watching everybody's testimony and he told me to share. So here goes. Uh, I grew up, I'll give you a little background about me. I'm, I'm 35. I grew up small town, um, church going family, Christian family. We went to church. Wednesday night Bible study, Thursday night choir rehearsal, drill team practice, Sundays church, you know, so we were in church a lot. And my grandfather, or my grandparents had a lot to do with raising me because my parents were military. And, uh, you know, I would see my grandfather all the time with his Bible. He lived with his Bible on the bed. I mean, highlighted, whole Bible highlighted, you know. So I knew he loved God. I always loved God. Jesus is the name that I called him. I always loved Jesus. I always felt him in my heart. Uh, I was told little to talk to him, go get in the closet and talk to him. So I did all of that, you know, and I've always had a relationship with Jesus. And I used to ask my grandfather as a young girl, maybe nine or 10, like, Papa, why are we here? Cause something didn't sit right in my heart that Jesus would create us just to live here, work, go to school, have children, praise him, and then die. And that's it. And that just didn't sit right in my heart. And I used to ask that, that question and I asked it to him because he was the only person at the time that I felt could answer it. And he told me we are here to live. <laughs> and that still didn't sit right with me. But, you know, now that I'm 35, my grandfather's gone on to glory. I know he didn't have the full understanding either of why we are here. So long story short, my mom married a pastor, my stepfather. She married him when I was about nine, 10. <laughs> and uh, she came out the military and my real dad remained military. So I went, I lived with my mom and my stepfather who was a pastor, wonderful man, righteous man. And uh, he's going on to glory now too. 
but I always felt a connection with he and I because of the spirituality that we shared. He was very spirit filled. And how I wish he was alive now for me to share what the father has shown me and told me because he's answered my question on why we are here. But uh, I was awakened in 2015, it started. I didn't know it started. Uh, I was sitting at home in my living room by myself. I had no children at this time. I wasn't even working at this time. I was just in school. I had a lot of free time. So I'm sitting at home by myself and um, I'm, I'm kind of just looking at the TV, not really watching TV, just kind of probably about to doze off and go to sleep. And it was a voice that came like in this area out and said, you are Hebrew. And uh, then it said it again, you are Hebrew. It, it was weird, but it still didn't really dawn on me at the time because I didn't know what a Hebrew was. I told my husband later on when he got home, forgive me, please. I told my husband when he got home later on, I said, I heard a voice that told me I was Hebrew. And he said, oh, okay. And you know, we didn't think anything of it. That was in about 2015. Long story short, finished school. I started working at this hospital in 2017. And I met my beautiful brother, Julius. I probably shouldn't say his name, but I'm gonna tell you. I met my beautiful brother and he was being awakened and he asked me, did I know what a Hebrew was? I said, Julius, I heard a voice a long time ago tell me I'm Hebrew. He said, yes, you are an Israelite. I said, Julius, what is a Hebrew Israelite? He said, I want you to watch this series. And he gave me this series called Truth of Religion, the history, that's it, the history of religion on YouTube. I think it's by Truth Revealed or Truth Unedited. I'm not sure, forgive me. I think it's Truth Revealed. But anyway, I started watching this series and I was hooked. I mean, it started from the beginning of religion, from everything, everything, from Nimrod and Tammuz and, and to their devil worshiping and to how we went into slavery, why we fled our homeland by getting taken over by the Assyrians, how we broke a covenant with the Most High. Father, he's my father. I call him father now. <laughs> I call him father now, but it told everything. And from the first time in life, I felt like I knew my father. Before I always loved him, and I knew he always loved me, but it wasn't until I watched the series and I put it together. Father God, you told me because you he he knows all of us so well that he knew even if i would have read this because at that time i was not a big reader i read now because i have to you know with things but i read now my hebrew culture because i want to but i wasn't a big reader then but uh he knew had i read it it wouldn't have struck me that this is you i'm talking about you it was that I physically heard his voice tell me I'm Hebrew. He has a clear, strong, masculine voice. And when they say he lives in us, he lives in us. He is in us. He is in us. And I can say he is in us because I've heard him. <laughs> and I put it together. Father God, you told me I'm Hebrew. Now I'm seeing all this about the Hebrew Israelites and I've always had this vision in my mind since I was a little girl of this blue, blue, blue sky and this green, green, green grass. And I'm just standing there looking at the beauty of it. And the Holy Spirit whispers to me, this is not Africa. Well, now, since he's told me the truth, I do know that it is Africa. But at the time, I would have thought Africa, I would have associated it with the slaves you know, where they said we had come from with the other Africans, the Hamites. Um, but now I do know it's all Africa. There's no such thing as the Mid East. And he told me that now that I can chew steak. I wasn't able to chew steak then, you know, so I couldn't have anything that heavy just yet. But now I understand it perfectly well. 
and uh i've been telling my family of course i i only told my mom and my my close family my sister my husband my brother-in-law julius that the, I, I physically heard the voice of the most high i don't tell many people that but that's just personal I go through a lot of spiritual things. A lot. I've always had. So I always knew it was something different. But I just wasn't sure. I've had people tell me all my life that I'm anointed. Since I was a little girl, they've always said, oh, you so anointed. You so anointed. I didn't really know at the time what that meant. I understand it now. And he's using me right now in this hour. <sighs> we are here to help save souls we are here to bring in the lost sheep of israel this is why we are here and that came to me he told me that when i was about 33 and 35 now but i asked that question when i was a little girl why are we here it just didn't sit right in my, my spirit but he told me why we are here and that i have a work to do please forgive me for crying this is very I'm, I'm not a crier, you guys. I don't cry. I don't cry. <laughs> but when I start thinking about my father and how he's always been there in my life, I can see his hand through everything in my life now. I always knew he was real, but now I see the things he's kept me from. He's kept me from so much, so much. And at the time, I didn't understand it. It's things that I thought I wanted, that I thought I, I were best for me. And he kept me from, and now I know why. Now that he's awakening me, now I know why. Had I did some of the things I wanted to do, I probably wouldn't feel this awakening the way he wanted me to. I don't know, but he kept me from things for a reason. But I love him unconditionally, and I know what we're about to go through. You know, uh, it's going to be some tough days ahead of us, but I have the faith, all the faith in the Most High God of Israel, my father, Father Yah, his beautiful son, Yahshua HaMashiach. I love them. The Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the set apart spirit. You guys, if I could tell you the stories I have gone through with the Holy Spirit, the feelings he has given me in my life. I've always believed, but now I know truth. And I thank T.O. Ministries for giving us the chance to tell our Hebrew awakening. My dream is that we're gonna all awaken, <laughs> and what a day. I think uh, it's just probably me and maybe a few others in my area right now, which not many of us. When we tell people the truth about going to church on Sundays. They think we're crazy. They think we're devil worshipers. They act, what happened to you? Your, your stepdaddy died and now you don't go to church anymore. You don't believe in God anymore. Oh no, I know God now. And now I will not, I cannot do any pagan worship. And I just thank him. I thank him for, for awakening me because he didn't have to. He didn't have to. He could have let me stay asleep. I thought I was awake. I was asleep. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> shalom family. Uh, that's the end of my lunch break. I got to head back in here. And that's it. Shalom.